Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the previous video, we created the design of this audio player and this is how it looks right now. We have also displayed the waveform of the audio by using a library called Wave Surfer. Right now, in this video, we will add the functionality to all these buttons over here. So, let's get started. This is the source code and in the JavaScript, we have written these lines of code. So here we are basically loading the audio track inside this wave surfer library and we have created a variable named audio track which is an instance of wave surfer. Right now let's go ahead and add some functionality to our buttons. So let's go to the HTML file and if we scroll down here we can see we have these buttons and they have classes play button, stop button and mute button and we also have this volume slider. So we're going to reference all of these buttons inside our JavaScript file. So let's go back over here and uh, let's type const and we'll just name it play btn and we'll type document dot query selector and here we will just type play btn and then let's target the stop button so let's type const stop btn equals document dot query selector stop btn and then we have the mute button so let's type const mute btn equals document dot query selector and here we'll just type mute btn and lastly we have the volume slider so let's type const volume slider equals document dot query selector and here we'll just type volume slider all right first of all let's add the functionality of the play button now when we click on this play button we want the audio to start and when we click on it once again we want it to pause so let's create an event listener for the play button so i'll just type play btn dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here. Now in Wave Surfer, you have a method called play pause. What it does is that if the audio is playing, then it will pause. And if the audio is paused or stopped, then it will start playing. So let's access this variable audio track. So here we'll just type audio track dot play pause. All right, now let's go back to our design and let's click on this play button. And we can see that the audio has started. And if I click on this button once again, it pauses. And if I click on it once again, it starts. You can go to any of these places and click on the play button. And the audio starts. Right, so the play and pause button is working alright. But we also want to change the icons of this button. So when the audio is playing, we want to add the pause icon. And when the audio is paused, we want to add the play icon. So let's go back over here and uh, let's go to our style.css file. And here we can see in the play button, we have hidden the pause icon. So now what we'll do is when the audio is playing, we will add a class called playing inside this play button. So here in the play button, we will have a class called playing if the audio is playing. And if we have the playing class in the play button, then we're going to display the pause icon and hide the play icon. So let's go back to our style.css. And here we will just type audio container buttons play btn dot playing. And here we'll type fa pause. And here we'll set the display to inline block. So when we have the playing class inside the play button, then uh, the pause button will be displayed. And we also need to hide the play icon. So let's type audio container buttons play btn dot playing. And here we'll type fa play and uh, let's set the display to none. Now if you go back to our design, we can see that the pause icon is displayed over here. That's because we have this playing class over here inside the play button. Now if I remove this playing class from here, then we will have the play icon displayed over here. All right, now let's add and remove this class in our JavaScript. So let's go over here to main.js. And when the play button is pressed, we're going to check whether the audio is playing or not. So for that, we have a method in Wave Surfer called is playing. So let's type if audio track dot is playing. Now this will give us a true or a false result. So if the audio is playing, then it will return true. And if it returns true, then we will add the class playing to this play button. So let's type play btn dot class list dot add and we'll just type playing. And if the audio is not playing, then we're going to remove this playing class from here. So let's type else and we'll just type play btn dot class list dot remove and he will just type playing. All right, now let's go back to our design and let's see whether it works. So let's click on this play button. And now we can see that we have this pause icon displayed over here. And when we click on this pause icon, we have the play button displayed over here. So everything is working all right. All right, now let's add the functionality of this stop button. 
so let's add an event listener for that so i'll just type stop btn dot add event listener and we'll type click and let's create an arrow function over here and we have a method in wave surfer called stop so let's use that so i'll just type audio track dot stop and let's go back to our design and uh, let's click on play and uh, let's click on stop and now we can see that the audio has stopped but we can see that we still have this pause button displayed over here so when we stop the audio we also had to remove the playing class from the play button so let's copy this uh, code from here and uh, let's paste it down here and now let's test it out so let's click on the play button and let's click on the stop button and now we can see that the play icon is displayed over here All right now let's add the functionality of this volume slider so let's go back over here and let's add an event listener for this volume slider so let's type volume slider dot add event listener and we will listen for an event called mouse up so whenever you release your mouse button this uh, event will be fired so let's create an arrow function over here and for this we'll create a function called change volume so let's just call it over here change volume we haven't created it but we'll create it in a minute now here in this uh, change volume function we have to pass the value of the slider so to get the value of the slider let's type volume slider dot value so this will provide us with the value of the slider right now let's create this change volume function so i'll just type const change volume and uh, we will use a method called set volume inside wave surfer so let's type audio track dot set volume and here we need to pass the value of the slider so here we can see in our function we are passing this volume slider value so let's access that over here by just typing volume you can name this variable anything you want so i'll just type volume over here All right now let's see whether it works so let's go over here and uh, let's click on this play button and uh, let's lower the volume and now we can see that the volume is zero and we have the volume slider working all right so everything is working all right right now the last thing we need to do is uh, make this mute button work so when you click on this volume button the volume should be set to zero and when you click on it once again it should be set to something other than zero now just like the play button we also have two icons over here in this mute button so if you go back to our html we can see that there are two icons fa volume up and fa volume mute now just like the play button we will add a class called muted when the audio is muted so let's go over here to style.css and uh, here we can see we have hidden the mute button over here so let's type audio container buttons mute button dot muted and we'll tap fa volume mute and we'll set the display to inline block so when the muted class is added to the mute button then we will display the volume mute icon and we also need to hide the volume up icon so let's copy this line of code from here and let's paste it down here and here i'll just type volume up and i'll just set the display to none right now let's go back over here to the html and uh, here we'll just add a class called muted and now we can see that the mute icon is displayed over here and if i remove this muted class from here then we have the volume up icon displayed over here All right now let's add the functionality of this mute button so let's go to our javascript and let's add an event listener to the mute button so i'll just type mute btn dot add event listener and we'll just type click over here and let's create an arrow function right now here we will add an if condition and let's check whether the muted class is added to the mute button so let's type if mute btn dot class list dot contains and here we'll just type muted so this will check whether the muted class is added to the mute button and if it's added then it means that the audio is muted so in that case we have to set the volume to something other than zero and we also have to remove the muted class from here so first of all let's remove the class so i'll just type mute btn dot class list dot remove and let's type muted and let's set the volume of the audio to 0 0.5 so let's type audio track dot set volume and we'll just type 0 0.5 and we also need to set the value of the slider to zero so it should come back over here 
when we mute the audio. So let's type volume slider dot value equals zero. And now let's add an else over here. And if the muted class is not added to the mute button, then it means that the audio is not muted. So we have to set the volume of the audio to zero. So let's type audio track dot set volume and we'll set it to zero. And we also need to add the muted class. So let's type mute btn dot class list dot add and I'll just type muted over here. And we'll also set the value of the volume slider to 0 0.5. Alright, now let's check whether it works. So let's click on this play button. And let's click on this mute button. And we can see that the audio is muted. And uh, if I click on this mute button once again, the audio goes back to 0 0.5. But the volume slider is not set. So let's go back and let's see what's the problem. And the problem is that we have set the value of the volume slider to zero over here. So we have to set it to 0 0.5. And in the else, we have to set it to zero. All right, now let's test it once more. So let's click on this play button. And let's click on this mute button. And we can see that the audio is muted. And if I click on this mute button once more, we can see that the audio goes back to 0 0.5. So everything works all right. Now the last thing we have to do is when the slider value is set to zero by dragging it over here, we can see that it doesn't change to the mute icon. So let's do that. So let's go back to our JavaScript and here in the change volume function, let's add an if condition and let's check if the volume is zero. So let's type volume and let's check whether it is zero. So this volume is basically the volume slider value. So here we can see we are passing this volume slider value inside this function. So if the volume slider value is zero, then we have to add the muted class to the mute button. So let's type mute btn dot class list dot add and I'll just type muted over here. And we'll just add an else over here. And let's type mute btn dot class list. And here we'll just remove the class. Right now it should work. So let's go back to our design. And let's bring this value all the way to zero. And now we can see that we have this mute icon displayed over here. And when it is uh, greater than zero, then we have the other icon. So everything is working all right. Let's test it once more. So let's click on this play button. And everything is working all right. We don't have any problems. Let's click on the stop button. And the audio is stopped. So that's basically how you create an audio player for your website. I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. And if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.